So we carry on with our explanation for chapter two, railway rolling stock systems. And we will be talking about uh, railway aerodynamics. And this is section four. I should highlight that aerodynamics is a very big field. And this is just a, a small introductory uh, uh, presentation about several concepts within aerodynamics that affects railways. So please just take this as a very, very light introduction to, to the aerodynamics world or to railway aerodynamics. So let's start. So this is the content of the presentation. We'll be talking quickly about aerodynamic fundamentals. Then we'll be talking about external aerodynamics, then tunnel aerodynamics. External aerodynamics is what are the uh, aerodynamics fundamentals or the aerodynamics phenomena that affects the behavior of, train, uh, of trains or impact the behavior of trains outside. Tunnel aerodynamics is about what happens uh, to the airfield, uh, to the airfield, uh, and I mean by to the airfield while a tunnel enter, uh, while a train enter into the tunnel. So there are some, of course, some standard theoretical and testing techniques that are associ associated with trains aerodynamics. So aerodynamic fundamentals, basic equations. So fundamental equation of fluid flow, if you are familiar with fluid dynamics, there are, you should read a book about fluid dynamics and fluids. Bernoulli's equation, force and moments coefficients, Reynolds numbers. So this is an example of uh, where we calculate the uh, Reynolds number for a train. And you can, uh, you, you, you need to look at Reynolds number in more details. So the aerodynamics fundamentals for trains, you need to, we need to understand aerodynamic resistance, train passing pressure, slipstream effect, and cross wind effect. So aerodynamic resistance is when a train passing through an air envelope, it has that air resistance that it reduces its speed, it affects the, its energy. We need to understand this resistance and design our trains to be aerodynamic friendly. Train passing pressure, pressure the train have a, a, inside it have a different pressure and the outside might have a different pressure. So the train will be moving from one pressure to another. Slipstream effect, that tail of wind that happens after the train passes through an air, an air envelope and crosswind effect. What can happen from a, a wind that is coming from the, uh, from the lateral side to the train? So the train is going at high speed and there is a crosswind that might come and uh, uh, affect the train movement or affect its vehicle dynamics. So what happens when a train passes through air? Let us, so there will be an initial disturbance caused by the nose. So there is an air envelope the train is going at speed, there will be an initial disturbance, then there will be a turbulent boundary layer, which will make vortices, those are the vortices, the small tornadoes, which will create a slipstream. And then the, after the train passes, it all will be removed, but those will be trans, uh, transient, this slipstream would, would actually would affect the crosswind or would affect the uh, the wind around the train. So these aspects has to be considered, okay, why we understand this phenomena, this is a pure science, and why we try to understand this phenomena or what happens, because it affects the design of our body shell, the bodies of the train. It also affects the design of the pantograph, how the pantograph is designed. Also, it, it affects the maximum operational speed, at what speed we can go with this train that we, are, we ensure safety and reliability. So this is about external aerodynamics. It's not only the train will be the train, the, aero, the train aerodynamics or the railways aerodynamics is important for the train in the in the outside. Also, when a train passing uh, through a tunnel, this would be another aerodynamic phenomenon. So here there is a certain pressure, and there is another air pressure outside. So when the train enters into the tunnel it will introduce pressure waves that might affect safety and comfort. It depends on the speed and it might create what these pressure waves can be as fast as faster than the sound, which will create what is known to be a sonic boom. 
uh, a very loud voice. Also, the train will suck, su uh, will create, uh, will suck some of the uh, some of the air from the tunnel and create what is known to be an aerodynamic drag. Also, it will introduce a new airflow. So all of these things happen when a train passes through a tunnel. So what are what what aspects affects these phenomena? The train speed, the speed at what uh, in which a train goes into a tunnel, the blockage ratio. What is the how much of the tunnel is blocked? The tunnel length. What is the length of the tunnel and what is inside it? The train length and type. What is the length of the train and what is its type? The train roughness. The tunnel roughness. The pressure of another train. There might be another train coming or from the opposite side or from the same or in the same direction. And entry time of the second train. All of these aspects affect these phenomena. So what can we do? We can improve the aerodynamic design of the train. We can make a more a smoother aerodynamically designed train. We can reduce the speed. We can make pressure sealed trains. So make sure that the pressure from the inside does not, uh, is not affected by the outside. We can increase tunnel area, increase this cross section. And we can modify entrance, make it smoother, make it better for any potential airflow that is coming from the train, or we can do active pressure control. We control the pressure inside the tunnel. And this can happen through way, uh, uh, through fans and any other configuration. So what are, there are many standards for aerodynamics uh, for railways and for trains, and there are theoretical and testing techniques. One of the famous techniques that is being used is wind tunnels, where you build these wind, uh, the, the, these tunnels models and these train models, and you start running experiments on the impact of, uh, of uh, wind and of a uh, train passing through a tunnel through this wind tunnel. So this is like a physical model, but also you can do some uh, computer models through computational fluid dynamics which will help you to, try to solve fundamental flow equations, which will help you to understand this phenomena in more detail. So computational fluid dynamics also is another important field. So that is being said, this is, this is what we have in terms of uh, railway aerodynamics. And this is a very introduction, a very high level introduction. There is much, much more and more detailed information about this topic. And there are many, many publications. We'll see you in the next section and have a great evening.